Hi there, my name's Anthony James. Uh, I'm a junk model maker, that means I make models out of junk. And have done for about 20 years as a company called Creature Armour. I work for film, television and theatre as a prop maker and I work in lots and lots of schools and have done across the UK and beyond. I'm just going to do a little bit now about general model making techniques. So if you've already seen this on another one of my YouTube posts, then just fast forward to the bit where my shirt changes colour, that will be the actual make. For those that haven't uh, seen any of my posts before, I'm just going to do a little general piece about making models. The first thing you're going to need, if you're making them out of junk, is some scissors. These are my sort of medium sized scissors, good for adults, but if you're working with children, what you want are these smaller scissors with the blue handles on them. Uh, they're obviously different colours. If they're yellow and green in the UK, they're for left-handed people. If they're just one colour like this, they're for right-handed. Get that right straight off, because obviously if you're trying to cut with the wrong pair of scissors for you, you won't be able to make anything. Children particularly will think it's their talent that's at fault, so we don't want that to happen. Uh, they're sharp, be careful. Small scissors like this are blunt-ended, which is great, so they're not quite as easy to stab yourself with. Also, um, they're very good for cutting round corners, so for making smaller models, these are the scissors you want, particularly if you're working with children. And then, everything I build, and you can see some of my things behind me, is made with masking tape. Uh, masking tape is fantastic stuff. It's, you don't have to wait for it to dry, it's dry straight away, and you can paint over it. But there are ways to use it, and certain ways not to use it. This is one of the ways not to use masking tape, particularly with children. Don't try and break it with your teeth. The first thing, obviously, you'll get it stuck to your lip and it hurts when you pull it off. That can make a child's lip very sore. Uh, it's also not very hygienic. Uh, so don't do it that way. The way I do it, and it's a very simple way, yes, you can use scissors, but I tend to find that slows you down. Just get the tape off, and you can see in my hand there, the, the sticky side's away from you. Put your thumb on the corner and pull. The tape comes straight off makes you very quick at making things. So I'm going to put that bit of tape there later on because that's how to do it. Put lots of little bits of tape around so they're ready to use. I'm going to do it again. Put a bit of tape off. Put your thumb there, right in the corner. Don't worry if you bite your nails or you don't think you've got very long nails. Just press your thumb on really hard. It will still work and tear. And that's your tape. That's really all you'll need. Uh, obviously some paints at the end of the make will be very good. Uh, there's all kinds of different paints out there. Try and use a water-based paint if you're working with children because that's easier to wash out of where they're going to get the paint all over. Uh, and uh, obviously the way I'm going to show you to make models, you should have a surface that's quite easy to paint. There are lots of different makes of paint out there. I find acrylic some of the best paint to use. So this re that's really just the general model make. Now on to the actual building of, well, what you're going to make next. Off we go. Hi and welcome to another Creature Armour make. We are today going to make a flying reptile. So again, strictly speaking, not a dinosaur, but everybody tends to think of it along with the dinosaurs. A, a pterodactylus. Now, they are called pterodactylus, not pterodactyls. Uh, pterodactylus, there was only one actual pterodactyl. Um, the pterosaurs were quite a big family of creatures, but pterodactylus, there was only one type. So we're gonna make the classic pterodactylus. The way we're going to do that is the first thing we need a bottle. Uh, bottles make great bodies for all kinds of creatures, dinosaurs, marine things, all sorts of things. They also make spaceships and what have you, but what we do for this, we're going to need some skin. So first thing, check the bottle's done up tight. If there's any liquid inside, you don't want it coming out. So do the top right up tight, and then we're going to make some skin. So I'm going to get a bit of paper here and scrimple it up. Now this could be newspaper, one sheet of newspaper. As it is, I've just got this white paper. I'm going to use this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it to the table. Now, I do this a lot. If you've watched any other of the makes, you'll know that I do this virtually every make because it's just so good. Bit of tape, half on and half off, and just stick it to the table like that. I'm going to do it again. A bit of tape, half on and half off like that, stick it to the table, and then at the ends as well. If you're working with children, you can use the magic one, wallop, wallop, and just stick it half on and half off. Stick the whole piece of paper to the table, be it newspaper, whatever you've got, and now pick a corner and very carefully take it off the table. Now some of the tape won't want to come, you've just got to persuade it, once you have done, just pull it off gently. Make sure the table's a laminate table like this, don't use a tablecloth table. Like that, and you've got a big piece of paper there. Turn it over, just like that, 
and then get your bottle and literally almost like a rolling pin like you're cooking and just roll it round like that to make some skin. Do that skin table, press it down, make sure it's stuck properly and there is your bottle covered in skin. That's elephant's body, giraffe's body, shark's body, castle, palace, tower, all sorts of things but today pterodactylus, that's the body done. Now what we're going to do with this, this is where we change the make from some of the other makes I've done, we're going to make the neck of the pterodactylus. This here is a kitchen roll, that's a nice long roll. It's up to you how long, you can have a really long neck. I tend to find when I'm making these that I cut about that much off. I think if they're any longer than that they look a bit strange. So just about, well what is that, about three centimetres, four centimetres off, just makes it the right sort of neck length. Put some tape half on and half off all the way round like that. Press it down, go snip, 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 all the way round and open those out. Make a sticky flower. Sticky flowers are great for sticking to things. And just put that on there. And if you can angle it up a little bit, it looks better. So just angle that up a bit and that's the neck on. Next, the beak. Another kitchen roll. Press it flat onto the table like that. And now cut from one corner to the other corner. It's as simple as this. Um, if you're making rabbits, you've just made the ears like that, look. And it's very simple. But obviously today, this is the beak. What we're gonna do, put a bit of masking tape around the bottom of one of them. And this is the bottom jaw, so I'm just gonna put that into position like that. Now, it's up to you if you cut petals or not. You don't technically need them for this. I am going to do them there just because I've put them all the way through. So, and now I'm just going to sort of angle it down just a little bit at the front because I want this mouth to look open a little bit. And there, look, you see, that's the bottom one. Now I'm going to stick the top one on the same. Bit of tape, half on and half off, all the way round, just like that. And I'll stick that one on the top. Just like that, and you can see, look, it's made the beak. It's a lovely, simple, fantastic way of making pterodactylus in this case, but obviously birds as well. So there's your lovely bird shape there. It'll also be a very large claw for a very large crustacean of some description, but right now, pterodactylus. Lastly, do the same thing with the toilet roll. Squeeze it, cut from one corner to the other. You'll end up with those shapes, the smaller version of what we've just done. If you do that, you can then put a bit of tape round here, half on and half off, all the way around. This will need petals, snip, 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 snip. This goes on top of the head, and this is that rudder-like growth that they have at the top of their heads, the pterodactylus. So a lot of other pterosaurs have this as well. Uh, again, paleontologists aren't quite sure what these were for. Some people think display, um, I agree, actually, I think they're a great display uh, uh, thing to have. But also, some paleontologists think they were sort of a rudder. And if Pterodactylus moved its head in a certain direction, this would work like a rudder on a, on a boat and would steer the creature in whichever direction it wanted to go. There's the head, there's the rudder put on. Next thing, some legs. Now, this is a slightly different make from others I've done. Get your toilet roll, squeeze it, but you don't cut from corner to corner. You move in a centimetre and cut from one mid part like that to the other centimetre in like that. Sort of like that, I'm going to show you that there, just like that. Get a bit of masking tape. Close those up and join them together. Same again on that one, because these are the two legs at the back of your pterodactylus. And then half on and half off, all the way round. Just like that, cut your petals out again. There's a lot of petal cut cutting in this make. Snip, 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 snip. Pull them out. Now, if you've used the bottle the way round I have, you've got the bumps here. And they're perfect just to fit one of those on as a back leg, like that. I'm gonna do the same again. Like that. And if this was, this uh, YouTube post was being done by anyone else, they would now stop and redo that bit because I stuck that leg on quite high. So I don't have to stop this and do it again. I just take it off 
that's the beauty of masking tape. And I'm going to choose two bolts that are a bit lower there and put it back on. The reason I haven't stopped and started that again, I just want to show you how easy it is to make things out of masking tape and cardboard, etc. Because you can always take them apart and redo parts if they're wrong. I'm putting the other leg on now. That one's going to go there. Just like that, I'm going to press them down. What can you see there? Okay. Looking that way, of course, if you ignore the rest of it, I've started to make a big slog. <laughs> but right now, we're doing the pterodactyl that way around. Next thing, wings. Uh, there are lots of ways of doing wings, uh, lots of shapes that you can do for particular pterosaurs. I'm going to do the simplest just to show you this. One corner, this particular piece of brown cardboard, one corner to the other corner, like that. There she is. Done. Simple as that, okay? However, if you put in there and in there, they're just a bit more pterodactyl shaped. Now, you stick these on with a piece of tape at the top here. I'm just going to turn that around so you can see. So, a bit of tape there, and then bring it up and put another bit of tape there, like that, okay? And that is a nice strong joint now, it won't fly about. And well, I hope it will fly back. And bend that over like that, and you've got a bit of a pterodactyl wing like that. I'm going to do the same again on this side just so that it's done. Bit of tape underneath it, like that. Bit of tape on top, like that. And just bend that wing a little bit like that, and there's my pterodactyl. Beautiful, beautiful model. Beautiful way these work is that you can make them fly, which kids love. The last part of this is just these little legs at the back to give him uh, or give this pterodactyl some claws. I'm just going to snip and I'm going to snip like that. Just two bits of cardboard which were those little corners of those wings and snip two little triangles out like this. Snip, snip and there's a little claw. And they just slot in like that. I'll do that one as well just to show you that. Snip, snip, make them pointy at the end, press that in, and there's the body, the wings and the claws you tear adapt to us. Cover that bit there, the, the shiny plastic with a bit more masking tape. And lastly, if you want some eyes, there's lots of different ways. Here's a way, find two bottle tops the same, put some tape around them like this, half on and half off. Children tend to do this when they stick things together. Uh, they get a big bit of tape like that, and if they're going to stick an iron, they tend to just do that, which tends to obviously destroy whatever eye you're putting on. So instead of that, just get a bit of tape, take it around the bottle top like that, half on and half off. Get these scissors, snip, 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 all the way down, open those out, and now you can stick bottle top on the head just where you want it and press those petals down like that and you'll have any kind of eye you want. Here's one painted, this was just uh, the same make, just painted up nicely uh, with two big red bottle tops for eyes. Uh, just painted that one colour first and then I put black stripes on because you can paint it any colour you like and do any kind of shapes etc on it that you like as well. You can even draw on it with a felt tip pen once it's dry. And there is your pterodactylus. Enjoy that make, it's a lovely make and a great one for the kids to do as well or adults, so have a go and uh, thank you for watching again.